How you doing guys? Today I want to talk about how to buy a used car. A few weeks ago I went to Cardiff, you may have seen the video, I'll link it there. On that trip, on the way back, my cam belt snapped. And today was going so friggin well. Uh... And because of that I had to buy a new car. Today I plan to show you guys with 20 checks how to go about finding the right car for you. So the first thing we want to do is check the price. When you're looking on these websites like Auto Trader and Gumtree and eBay and all those kinds of places, you need to make sure that the price is is right for what it is that you're looking at. For example, you may have a car that has a really high mileage and with that you'd expect the price to be a bit lower than you would if the car had a low mileage. So it's always worth checking on these car valuation websites and things just to get a feel for what you should be paying for the car that you're looking at. So yeah, make sure the price is right. Next thing, there's websites like uh, there's a .gov website I'll list it in the description below, but you can check the current status and the previous history of uh, all the MOTs for the car. Um, that's always good to look out for because not only would it tell you whether you've got a current test, valid test on your, on your vehicle at the moment, but what it also does, it gives you a bit of insight into the history of the car, how it's been treated, what work has been done on it, you know, you can also look at some of the things that it's failed on, if it ever has done, and you can check the car when you get there to see if the parts are new or not. These are all things that you should do before you even go and visit the car, by the way. So another thing that you can do is you can do a vehicle background check. And what that will do is that will check to see whether there's any finance against it, whether the car's been cloned, whether it's been written off. Um, all, all those kind of things, whether it's stolen. So it's just a good idea to, to do one of those. It might cost you, a, you know, two or three pounds, something like that, but it's definitely good for peace of mind. When you get the last thing you want to do is get, get the car home and then have someone knocking at your door trying to take it away. Okay, we found the car that we want online. We've called up the, the seller. We've arranged the time to go and see the car, to meet them and view it and, and check, the, check the vehicle over. So the first thing we do when we get there is, for me, I would check the tires first of all, because it's the easiest thing to check. The legal limit for a tire in this country, in the UK, is 1.6 mil across the center three quarters of the tire around the whole circumference of the wheel. 1.6 mil, how are you gonna measure that? So you can either get a tire depth gauge, which I'll show on the screen now, or if you haven't got one of those, you can use a one pence piece or a five pence piece, they work the best. But if you put them into the tread of the tire with the date facing down, if the date disappears and you cannot see it, the tire's good. Check it all the way around. If it's good all the way around and all the way across, we're good. If you can still see the date, that means that it's below 1.6 and that means that you might be able to knock a little bit of the price down with the seller if you still want to buy it. So repeat that on all four corners of the car. So the next thing you want to do is check the suspension. Now you're not really going to be able to check the suspension too well without getting it on a ramp, but whilst you have got it there, one thing I would make sure of before you check the suspension is make sure the car is on level ground. And the reason for that is so that if you can see one of the corners, one of the edges lower than the rest of the car, chances are there might be an issue. There could be a snap spring or a leaky shock absorber, or you could even have a flat tire. But it's a good indicator just to have it on level ground and check for any lower parts. One thing you can also do is you can bounce on each corner and check and see if you can hear any knocks. If you can hear some knocks, chances are something's not right. Next, bodywork. Bodywork and paint. So if I'm selling a car, I'm going to clean it first because I'm going to try and get as much money as I can for it. So let's hope that the car is in a good, clean state. If it's not, why? Are they hiding something? Just think about that one. If it is clean, it means that you can check for any scratches, dents, scuffs, 
Those are all things that if you're still happy with when you go actually negotiate, it means that you might be able to knock a bit of money off the price. Also, with the bodywork, look at things like trims, grills, alignment of different panels. If there's gaps or things do not look like they fit properly, then chances are it's had some bodywork at, at some point and, and that could be an indication of a crash. So watch out for that. And if there is anything like that, ask the owner. They may be able to explain it. If they can't, then I'd question buying it. Okay, now I know we all like to open up the bonnet and think we know what we're talking about and what we're looking at when we buy a car. Everyone says, lift up the bonnet, have a look. You know, you check for some leaks, we can all do that, that's fine. But do we actually really know what we're looking at? Well, first of all, I would start with all the levels. Check the brake fluid, check the coolant, check the oil level, make sure they're all where they should be. Also, if the oil's really clean, why is that? Has it just been serviced? If it hasn't, why is the oil clean? It could be an indicator. Ask them to start the car up. Does the car smoke? Check the exhaust around the back. Check the engine. Listen to the engine. Listen to see if there's any loud exhaust blows, any knocking, any vibrations that sound unnatural to a car. Bearing in mind that a petrol and a diesel do sound differently. Whilst the engine's running, check if it smells. There could be petrol-y smells or diesel smells, oily smells. You might not know what you're looking for, but if there's something that smells a little bit funky, just ask. Whilst you're under the bonnet, with the engine off, take the oil cap off and look at the bottom. If there's a yogurt, a yellow yogurty type sludge on the bottom, that is an indication that the head gasket could be on its way out. So always check that. Next, go around to the side, check that the fuel cap opens, check that it securely locks. The last thing you want is to be on on an empty tank, rock up at a petrol station and you can't fill the thing up. That is gonna be a pain. Whilst you're there, check it. It's not gonna take a lot of extra energy, but it's worth doing. Okay, next we're going in the car. So first thing we're gonna sit in the driver's seat of the car. We wanna see if there's any engine warning lights on, check to see you know, if there's a service light on, um, and also, whilst we're there, we want to check the mileage. Does the mileage match up to what they've put online? On average, people drive between 10 and 15,000 miles a year. Look at the age of the car, do the maths, does it work out right? Check that all of the doors, all of the doors, open, close, lock and unlock. This is part of the MOT test and if it doesn't work, it's going to cost you some money later on. Whilst you're at each door, check the windows, check they open, close. It's not an MOT, but it is an inconvenience if it doesn't work. The last thing you want is to be driving in the summer, down the road, and you can't open the window. Or you go to drive through a McDonald's drive through or a Burger King, and you can't open the window. What use is that? So let's say that the windows didn't open. Does the car have air conditioning? Turn that on check that works. Leave it running for about five to 10 minutes. If you, if the car feels really, really cold, it's working. If it feels the same, it's not working. Whilst you're there, check the heater works. Once you check the aircon, turn the heater right up and then see if it gets hot. Also, check the fan speeds. Turn, turn the dial or turn the speeds up to all of the speeds that it will allow you to do and just check that it's actually changing. Inside the car, have a little smell. Does it smell like fuel? Does it smell like damp? If it smells like damp, it might be worth checking the floor, checking the carpet, see if they're a bit wet. If they're a bit wet, chances are you've got a leak. And if you've got a leak, it means that the windows are gonna get all steamy and it's gonna smell for a long time. So that needs sorting out. Okay, we've checked the outside. We've checked the inside. Now let's take it on a road test. So we're driving down the road. First thing I'm checking is I'm, I'm, I'm feeling the steering. Is it, is it pulling at all? Is it vibrating? Is, is the car going the same way that the steering wheel is turning? Is the alignment on? 
If not, these are all things that are going to cost you money at the end of the day. If the steering wheel is, is vibrating, that could be a sign that one of the wheels is um, unevenly worn. It could also mean it hasn't been balanced correctly. If it's pulling at all, again, this could be tire related or it could be alignment related, but just check, make sure you're okay with it. So whilst you're driving, you want to be listening out for knocking noises, vibrations, grinding, any sort of judders or anything like that. These are all indications that there could be brake issues, tire issues, suspension, exhaust, all those things. So keep an ear out for those. If you stop the car, turn the steering wheel all the way to the left and then rock it. Then turn it all the way to the right and rock it. If the car makes any funny noises coming from the engine, that could be anything from an auxiliary belt to a power steering pump to a steering rack. All of, most of those things are not worth getting involved in. So we pull away again. Whilst we're driving, we wanna make sure we can stop. Feather the brake, does it pull? Does it do what it's supposed to do? Do an emergency, uh, emergency stop, is that stopping us in time? Check the handbrake, is that working? How many clicks does it have? If it has more than four, then we're good. Maybe three, three to five is good. Now we've stopped, we're gonna pull away again. How does the clutch feel? Does the clutch vibrate? Where is the biting point? Is it really high, is it really low? Does it feel just right? Check, check it out. Again, a clutch is not cheap. Okay, we're back from the road test. Everything looks good, like the paintwork, like the bodywork. Mileage is good, service history and all that is checking out well. Sp suspension and brakes all felt good. Clutch was at a good biting point. There was no smells or bad sounds or anything like that. Tires were looking good. One thing left to do, negotiate on the price. All car salesmen, even private sellers, they're always gonna up what they're expecting to sell the car for. Does that make sense? They're always gonna put the price of the car higher than what they actually want because they're expecting a negotiation. So always aim low and meet them in the middle. Most people selling the car are expecting to do this. So don't buy at the sale price. After doing these checks, this is not gonna guarantee that the car's not gonna drive down the road and the, and the head gas is gonna go or the engine's gonna blow up. These are just things that you can do to safeguard yourself and get the best you possibly can without having a mechanic to hand. I hope this has been helpful. Leave some comments, like it if you did, and subscribe if you want to see some more. Thanks for watching, guys.